To this day, the people who make me vibrate, who inspire me, who lift my spirit, who turn me on, who nourish me intellectually, politically and spiritually are activists, writers, artists, who are not scared of being ridiculed and bring down in their personal and political lives the untouchable barriers instituted and maintained between human and non-human animals by centuries of Western propaganda. They are people like longtime vegan and civil rights activist Dick Gregory who makes a strong comparison between the way animals are treated by the meat industry and the living conditions of African Americans in the ghettos. People like talk show host Montel Williams who cried on his show one day while talking about how he cannot uh, separate the images of chained and beaten circus African and Asian elephants from images of the enslavement of his own people in America. There are people like legendary performance artist Rachel Rosenthal, who barely escaped the Nazi Holocaust with her family and who asked, how dare we, how dare we do this? As horrible and abominable the Nazi period was, it was mercifully short. But we have been doing this to animals for countless centuries. And in the past century, it's gotten to a point because of our technology where we're capable of eradicating billions of animals a year and breeding them in order to do this, in order to torture and kill them, and for reasons which are spurious, which are absolutely no longer necessary and cannot be condoned. Other people who have made similar contributions include labor activist Cesar Chavez, Earth First activist Judy Berry, researcher Jane Goodall, writer Alice Walker, Rasta, artist and poet Benjamin Zafinia, and the people from the MOVE organization. In her latest book, Stolen Harvest, Indian environmentalist and physicist Vandana Shiva writes, at the, threshold, at the threshold of the third millennium, liberation strategies have to ensure that human freedom is not gained at the cost of other species, that freedom for one race or gender is not based on increased subjugation of other races and genders. In each of these strivings for freedom, the challenge is to include the other. For more than two centuries, patriarchal, Eurocentric, and anthropocentric scientific discourse has treated women, other cultures, and other species as objects. Experts have been treated as the only legitimate knowers. For more than two decades, feminist movements, third world and indigenous people's movements, and ecological and animal rights movements have questioned this objectification and denial of subjecthood. I'll finish by saying that I'm hoping one day the queer movement is able to open its political agenda and recognize, embrace struggles that go beyond their immediate boundaries. I'm not too optimistic that this will happen, but I would love for you to prove me wrong. Woo!